type of standard recurrent relations question with algebra that we see is set up like this. We don't know the values of a or b, which in this case are called p and q, but we are given three consecutive terms. So those might be u1, u2, u3, or in this case it's u4, u5, u6. If we're given three consecutive terms, we are always going to use simultaneous equations to solve for the values of p and q. So I've just made two copies of the recurrent relation underneath there, and we're going to plug in some values. So remember what a recurrent relation does. It takes a term and it finds the next term. So if I plug in u4 into the first recurrent relation, I know the bit on the left must come out as u5. If I plug u5 in, then I know the bit on the left would come out as u6. So knowing that all of that's true, I can then substitute numbers in in place of those terms. Now a quick bit of reordering gives us what are clearly simultaneous equations. And then it's just a case of solving those. So it will always be the case with recurrent relations that you can multiply one row through by negative one. That will allow us to cancel out the Q terms. So adding those two lines together, we will get 8P is equal to four. And if 8P equals four, then P is equal to a half. So we can take that value of P as a half and sub it back into one of the equations. I'll sub it into the second equation. So 10 times a half is five. Take the five to the other side, subtract it. Q is equal to nine. So P is a half, Q is nine. Three point three is recurrent relations with simultaneous equations. Recurrent relations with simultaneous equations. Okay, this is a very specific chapter title, but it's because it's something that's a standard example. And it's worth giving its own title. So let's do, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna write anything. I'm just gonna go straight into example 3.3 3 A. And I'm gonna say, the recurrent relation Right, I'm going to change slightly how I write this recurrent relation. We would usually write un plus 1 equals something un. But I'm going to write this in a slightly different way because it can be written like this and I don't want you to be thrown off if you ever see it. So it can be written as un equals, and we'll just call the unknown values a and b, so a u, well let's see if that's un and this has to be the term before it. This is going to be un minus 1. So that still works because that's the previous term and that's the next term. That term's one more than that term. Add b. So that is just the standard recurrent relation, written slightly differently. Has u0 equal to 5, u1 equal to 9.5, and u2 equal to 20.75. So that's the situation I said you would see three consecutive terms, and when you see that, it's simultaneous equations. So the question is going to say, find A and B. Right, solution. So, it looks like an A, but it hasn't. Right, solution, I blame the pen. So... We want to, to create two uh, equations here. We want to create two equations using these three terms. So what we know is, if I sub u0 into this recurrent relation, if I put 5 in there, then the next term that I get out must be u1, which is 9.5. So let's just leave blanks. Let's just say that's the next term, a times the previous term, add b. So you should agree with me that if I sub u0 into here, then if I've processed all of that, the next thing I would get out would be 9.5. Let's do the same again. Let's just do a blank recurrence relation. This is the next term equals a times the previous term, 
add b. So if I sub 9.5 into the recurrence relation, I don't know what a is, I don't know what b is, but I know the next term I would get out would be 20.75. And those are simultaneous equations. So I'm going to rewrite those. I'm going to write this as 5a plus b. 5a plus b is equal to 9.5. Like that and that are exactly the same thing. And then this one's going to be 9.5a plus b equals 20.75. Okay, so they should be nice and straightforward to solve because we always will have this loose b term that's just a copy of itself. So we can multiply one of them through by negative one, as I've said already. I'm going to choose to multiply the top one through by negative one because that's the smaller one. So let's just put it here, I'm going to times this one by negative one. So that will become negative 5a, negative b equals negative 9.5, and over here I've still got 9.5a add b equals 20.75. Now. 9.5 take away 5 gives me 4.5a. I'm going to add down the way, you see. So I'm adding these two together. So negative 5 add 9.5 gives me 4.5a. Negative b add b gives me nothing. That's what we hoped would happen. And negative 9.5 add 20.75. Well, it's easier to think... For me, what what is the what is the difference here? If I go from negative nine point five up to twenty point seven five, that's the same as twenty point seven five take away nine point five, which is the same as how much does it take to get from nine point five up to twenty point seven five? So it's going to be ten point five plus point seven five, so it will be eleven point two five. So I will get there. So to get my value of a, I am going to divide the four point five down underneath that 11.25. So we can fire that in a calculator. Alternatively, um, I can actually just see what the answer is. I can see that that goes in there two and a half times. Uh, let's say we didn't have a calculator. Well, let's just do this. Times the top by 100 and times the bottom by 100. So move the decimal point twice, 450. Right, I can see these both divide by five. So five would go in there twice twice, so 225 over, 5 would go in there uh, 9 times and then 0 times, so it's 225 over 90. They still both divide by 5, so 5 would go in there 4 times 45 times, and 5 would go in there once 18 times. They both divide by 9, so that divides by 9 to give me 5, that divides by 9 to give me 2, 5 over 2 is, as we thought, 2.5 is the value of A. So A equals 2.5, that's my first answer. I should point out, you probably would have a calculator for this, but you can do it quite straightforward without. Right, well, it's just something I've been thinking about, that's not really part of the working. Okay, to get part B, as we know, for simultaneous equations, we're just subbing back in. So let's sub back into this one here. 5a add b equals 9.5 becomes 5 times 2.5, because we now know a is 2.5. Add b equals 9.5. 5 times 2.5 is obviously 12.5. Add b equals 9.5. So b is going to be 9.5. Subtract 12.5, which will be negative 3. So the value of b is negative 3. So because I double underlined them, these two answers should be nice and clear. a is 2.5, b is negative 3.